art of commercial acting. And so this is what I'll be teaching in October from. October what? Uh, I start October 12th. It's a Sunday night. So I'm calling it the Sunday night um, actors workout or the Sunday evening actors workout. And that's the, this pamphlet I'm holding. Oh, yeah, it says Sunday actors. So we're going and uh, introduce your name again. Okay. I'm John Solari, the Method Actor Speaks, and we're speaking here with the lovely Mary. Mackie. <laughs> um, now you're training and all that, and you have some quotes and stuff you want to talk about. Yeah, because we were starting to talk about the commercial acting, and um, my teacher, John Howard Swain, uh, wrote a book called the, the Science and Art of Commercial Acting, and he pulls a lot, actually, you know, all the teachers do, pulls it from uh, Michael Shirtliff's book, uh, Audition. So many great books out there. And uh, so this is what I'm going to be teaching in October. And one of the things, the quotes I have on my business card that um, Michael Shirtliff says, um, the first step to a better audition is to give up character and use yourself. And I just... I well, we talked about that in the first show. Yep. Well, now, what does that mean to you and to your students when you, mm. when you, when you talk to them about that? What does it mean to you? Um, just using yourself, and you have to discover yourself, you know, through your acting classes. Because a beginning actor doesn't doesn't quite know it yet. It's all in there. Um, I also teach some teen self-esteem classes, you know, and it really is. You know, in acting classes helps us in, in life, you know, being more confident people. And um, using yourself um, first is going to make your read, your audition, your performance more authentic and more true because it's coming from you. And it seems very simple, but a lot of times actors will get scared or they get misdirected and they start acting like somebody else. Maybe somebody they saw in a movie or something. Imitation. I imitation, and then they're caught acting, <laughs> you know. And uh, we've all been caught doing that, you know. But um, the more we practice using ourselves, and then we build the imaginary circumstance on top of that, you know. So there's more work and maybe a, a theatrical part that you're playing than a commercial, but you're still asking the same questions. Who am I? Where am I? You know, what was the moment before? Why am I? You know, all those things. You know, what am, you know, who, yeah, and the most important thing, who am I talking to? And uh, why am I talking to them? Does that why? mean maybe? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's... And why, and Salome would always say, yeah. and why is it so important today that I have to say this That's thing? right. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and it's using the, the, the copy that we're given in a commercial audition you know, that's, I've got to give you this information, you know, so to help you with your headache or your, um, you know, whatever your illness is. And there's so much, so much more medical, um, you know, commercials out there than before. You know, fibromyalgia, the commercial I have running now is um, Oxitrol for women. And, uh, and they put some gray in my hair to make me look a little bit older, but there's just, you know, a lot more of that out there. So a lot more work for the actor, um, 45 and up. So, um, yeah. That's interesting when you say they put some gray in your hair, because today it's, like, I am Italian, mm -hmm. and I was involved in organized crime. I went away for that. Mm -hmm. And yet I never get, you know, because I have blonde hair, they don't think I'm Italian or been involved. <laughs> It comes to gangster parts, this and that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when you said the gray hairs, wow, somebody had imagination yeah. over there. Because this business has changed. Mm -hmm. It's no more, you know, they, you, uh, the casting directors and this and that. It's all now packages. It's done by businesses. It's mm -hmm. not the, like the old days. Mm -hmm. Marion Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Dorothy in New York was a great casting director. And yeah. where they, they would go and look at actors. Yeah. Go to plays and this and that. Yeah. How so, do you find casting today? And you've been around since the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's changed so much. And for a, a couple of years, I was actually an agent, a talent agent up in San Francisco. 
and we would be there till 10 o'clock at night pulling headshots and resumes for packages or calling actors you know you have uh, an audition at two o'clock tomorrow please call and confirm you know and then if there was copy we would have to fax it to them so we were there till 10 o'clock at night you know because people wouldn't be home first thing in the morning we would try to get confirmation if they left a message on the voicemail I mean, the amount of time it saves is wonderful. Everything's on the computer to confirm right. all that. There's a lot of great changes, um, but uh, we the did. The personal yeah. touch is gone. I know a lot of it is. So, uh, you know, the casting director workshops. Uh, at first, I, I wasn't so sure about them, but now I just see, you know, that's really great because we don't have that personal touch, and because there's so many actors and less work because they're in other places. You know, we have the opportunity to, to say, okay, I feel like I'm right for this type of show. Um, so you take, you know, work on a scene with your coach, and uh, then you go to a casting director workshop so they get to see you. Because if your agent can't get you in, and that doesn't mean that you have a bad agent, it's just that just like there's so many actors, there's so many agents, and it's just there's all, so, so much a casting director could do in a day or a half day. So I, I think it's really great, you know, and I just think we have to be smart about it because it's another cost for actors. But just to say, okay, this is my, you know, finding out your type, what shows you think you're right for, work on scenes that fit that kind of show, and then go to those casting director workshops so you can have that, that personal time again. And they have a Q&A at the beginning, and then everybody goes outside the room, and then you have your own personal time in the room with the casting director for feedback. Really? You know? So I... I'm all for it now. I really think yeah. it's uh, a, another way for us to to build those relationships. You might be talking me into it because I know what yeah. I understood by going to the union meetings, the board meetings, that it's illegal for them to hire you if you go to a casting. Yeah, I, I don't know that the, the, there's a <laughs> right um, format, and they always. They're, change the words, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and I know they always say, you know, at the beginning, this isn't. Um, you know, this isn't for jobs, but you know, you, you know, a lot of people, a lot of my friends that have been called in to audition, and it's just a way of getting your face in front of them. And you know, there's no, there is no guarantee, you know, and uh, but it's your way of finding out, you know, are you really right for that show when you get the feedback from the casting director and start building the relationships. You learn so much from it. So, okay. and the union does them for free. So I've done them at the, at the union as well. So SAG after also I think very it's rare, but they don't have them as frequent. Yeah, there's like a couple of I think a couple of like four or five a month, and you can only really take, yeah. But there's a waiting list, and you just have to be fast with it. But um, oh, I got to look into that one. Yeah, because it's just so between maybe having to pay for it and the union, you know, it's it's just trying to utilize everything that's. Um, that can help us, you know, get our foot in the door, so. I put one up on YouTube. Uh, I, I do a monologues from Gary Gilmore's letters. I don't know, Gary Gilmore, Norman Mailer wrote the book, The Execution of Song. Mm. He was executed in 1978 out in Utah. And I do the, the actual letters that he wrote to his girlfriend from prison, wow. Death Row, which has never been done. Mm. Wow. You know, the movie was made, uh, I remember when it came out, a lot of my friend, the lady in Vince, so you're perfect for this, because I just come out of prison, mm -hmm. and, and, and mm -hmm. for a year, I got out. And, you know, I was on like parole at 70, uh -huh. 77. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But uh, I put it on. I, I think I sent it to a few casting directors. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Get yes. your opinion because yeah. uh, you've been working with agents, and this and that. I always like people's opinion. I'm, I'm not afraid. I want to know what doesn't work mm -hmm. when I do scenes. You know, I'm not there to. It feels nice to somebody, oh, you're great, I like your talent. Yeah. I want to know what works. Yeah. I used to send my tapes, Active Studio in New York, years ago used to uh, videotape everything. Mm -hmm. And I would, they would give it to me and I would send it back to California to Salome. And she would, you know, critique my work. Mm -hmm. Tell me, John, you were nervous. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't nervous. And then one day I just sat there and said, you know what, Salome maybe knows a little more than I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great getting feedback, you know. It's yeah. it's really really helpful. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not trying to play Hollywood with the glasses. Mm -hmm. it's just that I'm at that age where mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I can't the, see sometimes. The, the bright light coming. The in. bright lights, the Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, 
always mm -hmm. wanted to be. So what is your ambition? What kind of roles? Mm -hmm. You know, you've done a lot. Have you ever thought about trying out back to studio? You know, it's free. They take you on your talent there. Mm -hmm. It's the only place I know where they do that. Well, yeah, I didn't know that. Um, I hadn't considered that, but I, um, I, I just love to work, you know, whether yeah. it's a, a week or a day, a, a commercial, um, film, independent film. I, I tend to really enjoy independent films because there's usually a, a message that the director is, you know, working on without uh, any pressure from a big network to do it in a certain way, so yeah. there's more freedom in getting his message, and if you like that and are inspired by it, that really, um, I, I love to be a part of that process and, and act in it. I did a recently a one, uh, The Preacher's Son, and played a judge, and I'm, I love playing it. It was so much fun, you know. So I like that fact that we're working um, with different people all the time and different directors and different actors and different parts, you know. I really enjoy the mix of it all. It's really, yeah. I, I played a judge once. I, Actually, I was in, in Cleveland, and I was supposed to, I, I read for the part of the detective, and they wanted me for the detective, mm -hmm. but they said they had, they had to give it to a black actor, mm -hmm. you know, so, so the director felt bad, and he gave me the part of the judge, and I left, it was a federal judge, and the real judge was there, and I, had a, I said, well, yeah. everybody go home, you're all free, <laughs> I love, I love a big bench, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I know, it's I know. fun, it's, yeah. What, what did you feel like when, what is it, how did you, you know, get into that role? What did you do to play a judge? <sighs> well, if you can talk about it, that, you know, yeah. sometimes we have personal things we don't want to reveal. Yeah, and I it, a, co a combination of that where it's just um, you know the authoritative, but how they wanted her to still be kind, because especially this story, um, she really cares a lot about the education of kids and the. Make, making sure the kids are in a safe home and so the, the judge was very passionate they, they wanted that passion in the, in the judge and, and making sure kids are taken care of properly and authoritative and um, and it, I just slipped right into it and uh, and then the other kind of work that I do it's very interesting because I, I had an acting coach that once told me okay do you have someone you're talking to? I think it was a monologue class. I, yes, I do, Billy. And she says, but don't tell me. But So she guided me through it to make sure I had everything filled up right before I took it again. But she says, but don't tell me. And I think that's really important, like you said. Yeah. We, if we reveal it, it loses its power for us. I always ask. Isn't that interesting? That, it is. It's I do. true. It's like it's gone. Yeah. If they... Maybe the yeah. director, that they're the only one you're kind of in cahoots with yes, on set. Can. Yeah, he'll come up and whisper to you. Yeah, they're like the <laughs> only one that can be, a, you know, yeah. So but it um, is true. That's why I always ask, can you, yeah. can you talk about this? Because there are things, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, you shouldn't uh, reveal. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. That's so true. So, I, I, and I enjoy it all very much. And you're smiling, so you must have a yeah. lot of private... <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of private stuff. Not too private. I think and it's just a mix of all this. You know, I, I've had just wonderful teachers in, uh, in San Francisco. You know, John Howard Swain and Billy Shepard were my, my, the teachers that I spent years studying with that were the most influential on me, you know. Uh -huh. And, and um, yeah. Well, what did you really like, like about auditioning? What is the book about? So, if the audience, this has been around for a while. I know you can tell by the cover. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've but uh, used it a lot. What do you? What is it? What it, if you would give a synopsis of what you've gotten out of this book? What would it be? Well, I think uh, a couple of things, but the the main one that that John uses is line to line objectives, and we use it for both the theatrical and commercial, and it's. You know, it's a great exercise sometimes when you're looking at your line. Maybe it's one line. A lot of times it's one line, or let's say it's five lines. And you take that one line and you have that action verb, you know, to educate, to admire, to chew up and spit out. I mean, you know, there's so many different adverbs, and you just practice with that, that line, to admire. Could you give us a... Um, an example of it and it's a great exercise to kind of go then you start having discoveries oh I didn't know it could be taken that way um, 
would you like a glass of water? It could be very simple like that, and you could admire someone. Would you like a glass of water? It could be to inform. Would you like a glass of water? To educate. Um, would you like a glass of water? Um, to seduce. Would you um, like a glass of water? Yes. <laughs> I love that one. That's fun to play. Yes. But see how that completely changes? There's no pressure on the actor. And sometimes when you're given direction, it could just be... It, but, but sometimes you play, it's a great thing to play, and you can do it oh, by yourself. Definitely, yes. You know, it's like, oh, that's interesting. And then when you, a lot of times when I go to auditions for commercials, and if it's a one-liner, they'll say, okay, great, Mary, just do it four different ways. Let me see. Right. And then, you know, they may, may then give me some direction from there. And uh, so it, you always have something in your pocket when you go into an audition. I think line-to-line -line objectives is, is a great tool. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Well, it's, and I told you earlier about the phone. How we talk on the phone. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I used to give my students the only, well, first I used to tell my students, uh, everything I'm teaching you doesn't come from me. It comes from yeah. past greats that give it to me. Mm -hmm. But the only thing I can give you is, I always, when doing a monologue, I used to have my students doing it like they were on a cell phone. Mm. And then with, all of a sudden, you see the difference. Yeah. That you know, it made them Helps more them comfortable. Connect, yeah. And something is like Luciano Pavarotti. They, you know, he always had the the, the big long handkerchief for this and that. Mm -hmm. And they and they one day they asked him, you could say it looked like he was showboating, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he says, no, no, it's this way. I have somebody there. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. he, he had someone to sing that's to. That's beautiful. Yes, that's beautiful. Having and, somebody there, yeah. And that's when I, when I thought about the yeah. cell phone. Somebody you have there. somebody there. That's great. You know, yeah. and, and just help with it. Yeah. Luciano, I got that from Luciano Pavarotti. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was so yeah. beautiful when he said that. That and, is you know, totally beautiful. You know, I have someone there. To wow. sing. What a loss, what a loss. Yeah. Thank me, I had cancer. Oh, mm. what a gift he was. Mm -hmm. I'm a big opera fan. When I was in prison, I used to sign my letters. P.S. I like the opera. <laughs> and people didn't, you know, I said, what does that mean? They said, well, I'm not what you think I am. Mm. You know? Yeah. I'm not a convict. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the opera. I love life. I'm a thing. Besides, I was sent there by a stool pigeon. <laughs> I did a, a, a lot of work in the prison. Did and, you? And, and that's exactly what I'd hear so much, you know. And at the downtown detention center, I would teach. Uh, Here in L.A.? In L.A., yeah. Oh. And, uh, and it was a part of the LIFE program. The LIFE it is uh, living in freedom every day. And you, you get to see them who've, who they really are, you know. And yeah. uh, they were beautiful men, you know. And it was just uh, very interesting Getting to hear their st hear their stories and um... it got me out of prison. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a place in there was a group in New York called the Street Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to come and you know in the jails and the prisons and that's mm -hmm. how. Because <clears throat> in 1967, when I started acting, about two years later, instead of picking up a script, I picked up the gun. Mm -hmm. and so uh, back then it was I wanted to be a gangster more than I wanted to be a. Wow. An actor. An actor. Wow. Acting was just a good place to get laid. Wow, this okay. Was in, yeah. In Greenwich Village okay. in the 60s. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, in the 60s, Give me a yeah. break. Yeah. Anyway, well, and I did it in, in, in when I was in prison, and, uh, yeah. you know, I enjoyed it, and people, you know, it was all right, but it was another way to get out, too. Mm -hmm. Get me parole. I knew that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the street that I, I thought about it, I, you know, I would like to get involved in that, because... You know, I know what acting is about. I know what prison's like, yeah. and uh, it's something I might be interested in doing because people. Yeah. And in prison, you always have what you have. You, have, you you've been in there. You have your white guys. Well, three you got Mexicans out here. We had Puerto Ricans back in New York. Uh, everybody. You had the white guys, the Puerto Ricans, the black guys. Then you had the Italians. Mm -hmm. We would never consider white. We, mm -hmm. the Italians were always. Uh, Mm -hmm. Well, we ran the joints back then, basically. Mm -hmm. you know, so. yeah. 
it was a different yeah. era. But, you know, it's something I think I could do. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to give back. And yeah, I you have to give back. It's uh, the, the other thing that I love doing and for actors out but there. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but why yeah. did you get involved in that? Um, that was through, uh, I used to go to... Hey, why? Um, uh, I, was, I used to go to Agape, and they had uh, Freedom Light pr uh, Prison Ministries, and I would just was invited to go, and when I went for the first time, um, I, just something spoke to me, you know, I just felt connected, and that, like, that was where I needed to be, you know, to give encouragement, to give light, you know, and... Um, and then I was asked to teach a class, and you know, after teaching actors, you know, you know, it was it felt very natural to do that. And I kind of combined my acting and um, you know, teaching the meditation and uh, kind of life skills and acting that, and combined and, and taught that. And it was great. It was a great response, and uh, did that for a couple of years and uh, then ended up moving back home for a while to take care of my mom and then recently moved back. So I'm waiting to kind of get back in and in with them again. You have a, a great history. I want you to just try to lean towards me so oh, yes. you can see yourself up there. Oh. And uh, I don't want you to be uh, off camera and this and that. Yeah, go on but you do have a, a, a wonderful resume of oh. the acting world. I, mean, I don't know if I say it's wonderful, but I'm. It's very interesting and very knowledgeable and very uh, useful, I would imagine, mm. that you're, you're able to go anywhere and teach it. You must have been a big, big hit in prison, though, I mean, jail. You know, you must have had a full class. Well, I think it was great because, it, uh, I guess, it, you know, it's that whole thing that, like, the quote back that Uta Hagen has, you know, it's that when we're comfortable in our own skin and give permission for people to just be, you know, I didn't bring any judgment in there at all. And unless they shared it, we didn't know what they were in for, you right. know, because there's no judgment. It's, okay, let's, what can we do now? How can we better our life now and start building the skills so they can be successful uh, when, when, they, when they leave and while, and while they're there. And, uh, Did you ever get involved with any afterwards? Now, there was there's one person uh, who really had a strong light. It was just an incredible man. And then he went to the halfway house after prison, and I would pick him up and take him to church at, at Agape. And uh, I've just seen his life blossom. Really? You know? And I know that's a small percentage, unfortunately. Uh, but he just had, the, I think, supportive people, you know, once he was out that really... Uh, helped him, and uh, and he was just a strong soul, and he's just blossomed and remarried, and so just one person that I know of is. It's all it takes is one, then it worked. Yeah, I know. I'm so happy for him. I really am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and the other thing I wanted to mention for for actors is another great program is called Book Pals, and that's part of the SAG Foundation. And it's where actors go into classrooms once a week and read to kids. And I think that's a great practice of your acting, no matter if you're beginning or an experienced actor. Because, talking about the truth, it's like if you're not entertaining, kids will tell you like that. Right. They're not going to be polite because yeah. they don't know how to filter yet. So, and I tell you, it's such a great way to give back. You know, you're bringing a book to life. You're getting them excited to, to read and reading... Uh, it's been proven will um, they'll be better students and more successful in life, and uh, so you're a part of that. And it's you know, and you're a movie star when you go there. It's like oh, you know, yeah. Miss Mary's here. Whoever it is, they're so excited to see you, and that that helps us in this rejection world we live in. And we're bringing a book to life, and it's the funnest thing in the world. And I just encourage anybody, uh, and you can pick if you want seventh grade, if you're more comfortable with chapter books, or I like second and third because I like picture books, and uh, it's it's just a Is great. Is that what the SAG Move On? I don't know if I know the SAG Move On. Is that it? Which, what part of SAG is, does that? Well, it's actually not, it's interesting. They're not part of SAG after union. They're part, they are separate, and they're very clear about that they're separate, the SAG Foundation. Well, the SAG Foundation, where they yes. have all the movies and stuff like that. That's right, so. I'm banned from that because I didn't, uh, I didn't 
you know, I was supposed to go, but I didn't know how to let them know. It's so complicated if you don't know computers. Yeah, online, when you have to yeah. let them know you can't make something. Yes, in, if you miss three, I then they ban you for six months. Was that what it is? Okay. So, because I was, you know, I didn't know. I, I, yeah. I keep meaning to go over there and talk to them, but I, it's very difficult for me to talk. I can't, I'm not a diplomat. <laughs> Well, I think, the, and I think there's a phone number you can call too. No, what I'm saying, yeah. then I get angry. Oh, okay. You know, you know, I didn't know, and it's the next thing I'm looking to rip their lungs out. Okay. So I think before <laughs> I get in, again. I'll wait the six months. Yeah, wait the six months. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good, and they'll, um, that'll go by fast. I have to, because uh, it's a great, yeah. Yeah. But there is, a SAG Move does a lot of stuff like that too. Mm. You might want to look into that. They yeah, have, I will. They do a lot of... Uh, They'd be interested in something like that. I thought they did have it. Well, that's great. So you, so you I go to the, a lot of the board meetings and, yeah. and the SAG things. Um, do you belong to the Film Society? Not here. I, I was in San Francisco, but not here. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to, actually. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll keep in touch if you like, because it's yeah. every two weeks. You know, they have them over the Director's Guild. Okay, yeah. I'll keep in touch if you come that. as a guest. Because yeah. we're allowed to do that, and I always say. Last year, I, I, I bought a parking pass by mistake because I always take the bus there. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Don't <laughs> so, need a parking pass, yeah. But I don't, you know, I take the bus there. It's, it's yeah. easy. Just go up the block here and I'm there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they have them every two weeks. They have a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, I enjoy it. And get, so you, do you want to tell people who your agent is? And again, on this show, you could tell your website again because we have it. Sure. And it's on your card, isn't it? Um, this card? Not that one. Because um, I put it on the show. Yeah, it's uh, ex Expressions Knowing You is my website, um, .com. And um, I've got a great, great agent, Maverick, Samantha at Maverick. And, uh, and then I have Marlene at the Marlene Agency. And then Stars Agency in San Francisco. So, so you have, do you have a manager? Because um, that's the new thing out here. I, you know, I did for a while, and then I just, uh, I it just got to be expensive because you uh, having to share, you know, yeah, they, yeah. so much, you know, fifteen percent. They get fifteen and, and ten percent, or twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. So unless they're really, you know, getting you out there, you know, and um, and you'll be teaching again. Let's get that in there before yeah. this. Where? So. Um, I'm going to be teaching, I have uh, some complimentary uh, free classes in, in September, so you just check the website and click uh, and Well, Facebook too, right? Um, Facebook um, on there too, and uh, four, I have four Sundays in September. You can pick one and come see what I teach to see if it's for you. It may be, it may not be. And then October 12th through November 2nd, I'll be teaching a four-week on-camera commercial class. And so one thing that's so important that we did at Full Circle is when we film you and, you know, you, you get the direction back from your teacher and you get it on one level, but then when you see it, it's like, oh, so it really speeds up the process. So what I do is film it and then the takes I want you to see, I'll upload it on YouTube and click unlisted so nobody else sees it but you and I send you the link. So I'll do that throughout the four weeks. And uh, oh, it's, it'll be just be a, a great workout, you know. Just you know, even if you uh, are going out commercially, if somehow you know you don't feel like you're at your best, you want some more confidence, or you're new to commercial acting, this would be a, a great workshop. But come take the complimentary class to, to check it out. And I will recommend that. And uh, you are uh, wonderful. I'm so I want you to come back. I'd love to. No, really, uh, yeah. I said it, but there, there, there's so much knowledge. And I want to get this up today to get it out, and uh, unless we can go on and on. And when you come back, there, I, I got to learn how to do them links. Yeah. You know, I want because then I can send it to people it's that so, want to see it. So great. But I don't it's know so how helpful. to do it. It's uh, too many bats to the head when I was a kid. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but all this here will, I'll be will be on the show, and you'll be able to get in touch with Mary. And it's really been wonderful having you on. Oh, thank you so no, much. No, thank you. Thank you. So we're going to end this. And uh, I had this photo here of Joycelyn. When you were talking, I noticed your card. She also has final prints. Uh, she does hair and makeup, and, and uh, she does she does uh, cards, too. Oh, she does, because I need new cards. Oh, so. she, final okay. print. I'll send it. You can take awesome. that card. 
<laughs> and, uh, I will, thank you. JoyceLynn.com. Yeah, she does, and she'll give you a good deal. Okay. She cut my hair, I, I find me, and she, I like it. Good, yeah, she did. We were doing a film together, mm -hmm. and she, after we were doing she said, I, I gotta cut your hair. <laughs> she had to do it, that's the artist in her. It really yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. And she, 